Hi, Apartment Therapy. I'm Jason Saft. Welcome to my one-room mansion, my 450-square-foot apartment in Brooklyn. So since I don't have a formal entry, I put a chair out here so I could sit down and take my shoes off because I never, ever, ever walk into my apartment with my shoes on. And then I have a little dresser here where I keep some backup things like paper towel, toilet paper. It's the ultimate sort of New York way of living. Use any single space you can for storage. Come on in. So when I first walked into my apartment after the closing, it looked very different than it does now. And we had a little bit of work to do, but I still have not renovated. The apartment is in original condition. I think about the space in terms of different zones. And so I wanted to have a place to eat, where I could also be able to work so it's multifunctional, a space for my daughter to sleep, a space for myself to sleep, a space to get dressed, a space to cook. Welcome to my living room, and I say that in quotation marks. So, a nice big area rug. This is Senna from Lulu and Georgia. It is one of my favorite rugs. I probably own about a dozen of them and I use them in really special projects. I want it in my own home. I love the graphic pattern. It's also super soft and cozy and that's I think a really important thing when you're picking out a rug for your home, especially a small space. If you're gonna sit on the floor, is get a rug that feels really good, like you wanna just lay on it. Then I've got the new Marconi sofa from CB2. It's a great piece and I love the combination of the deep rich red marble and the olive green. And so I think red and green are a great color combination together when it's not done to look like Christmas. And then I had the coffee table fabricated. So it's a Calcutta Viola marble table. And then of course the vintage chairs are really good. And I've got my antler lamp here, a Josh Young print and I love the Noom chair. It's a really special piece that I brought into my apartment and one of the things I love is the way that it just sort of blends into the wall and the color. Into my bedroom here, I've got a Ross Cassidy design bed for CB2, beautiful piece, really soft, sculptural, and again, the color of the bed, the material, it's very similar to the rug without matching it, and also the color blends with the wall and it just, it's really nice and seamless. And then one of my favorite pieces of art, uh, it's an original piece by Josh Young, he's a favorite artist of mine. And I've got some more art over here that are a couple of my favorite pieces. I catch myself saying this all the time when I'm talking about stuff in my home, like this is my favorite this, I'm like, this is all my favorite. So this is a John O'Hara painting. John does these custom things where you could pick out any song, any record, your favorite artist. And so Madonna, Like a Virgin, one of my all time favorite songs favorite recording artist of all time. That is the one that I had made for my apartment. I have others that I use in work, but this is the one that was coming here to my home. And so now we're gonna go from my bedroom to my daughter's bedroom. And so we've got a little day bed for her here. Just a great little desk for her so she can paint, do whatever she wants. It's from EcoBird, it's made out of recycled plastic and it also wipes clean. And so I decided to put her bed here. So one, it gives a little bit of a sense of privacy in an open space because I'm on the other side and there's a wall over here. I also, where my bed is, is pretty drafty and I didn't want her as a young child sleeping in between three drafty windows. So I put myself there and I gave her this little nook over here. We've got a lot of my favorite art pieces that are up here. Some from a friend Kiel, some I found in a bodega in Gowanus. And then here I've got pretty much everything I need to function packed away, my daughter's clothes, tools, everything organized in one dresser because this is my key storage space aside from my one closet. Welcome to my walk-in closet. You can stand in it, you can walk in it. It's actually a really decent size, but it's not like some massive walk-in closet, but I had to make it super functional. And so I worked with BK Builders to build out the closet, because this is something that while I'm handy, I can't really do all of this. The idea was to make it feel like its own separate room, to really build up on the height. And so obviously at five, seven and, and a quarter, I cannot get up there, but I have a folding ladder that's behind the refrigerator or next to it. And this way, whenever I need to go up there, I can get that out very easily. It fits in here. I have a lot of shoes. I wanted to make sure that we could fit everything in one organized space. Uh, and then also, you know, I had to think about things before building this out, like 
where would my luggage go, where would the vacuum go, and so this way, constructed it into different areas. I've got folded clothes, but also mixed in with that stuff. I've got my winter blankets up there. Then within the drawers, I have other things, sweaters, off-season clothes, other items are just, they're right up top within arm's reach. And that was the really important thing to think about how do you access things? How do you need things? By the entry door, there's a, a stone plinth with a sculpture on top of it. And it's at an angle. If you look behind it, there's the laundry bag that I take my laundry downstairs to the washroom. When you live in a way that you know what you need to function, you know what you have to have. Now we'll slide right into the formal dining room. So I eat here and I do my work here. And so I wanted something comfortable and I think a great trick in a small space instead of just using dining chairs is a small banquette. This way it's flush against the wall. It's also a great space for two and there's less visual clutter. I have chairs throughout the apartment, so if I have people over, we can just pull up other chairs. I got this gorgeous marble table. This is the Babylon from CB2 because I wanted something really substantial here. It's a very small space. And then I used an oversized mirror. This was a gift from a friend. So that's what happens when people know that you love stuff. You often get their discards, like these beautiful oversized mirrors were given to me because they didn't want to have to deal with disposing of it and it was no longer their style. But great trick because it's bouncing the light back that way. And when you're walking towards it, you see the views from outside the window, so it makes the small space feel much bigger because you think it's extending past us. So this, I guess, would be the library or the study, or if you're Jewish, this would be your tchotchkeria. So I've just got everything from vintage books to favorite pictures to paintings by local artists. I've got one of my favorite pieces here. This is from Dear You Ceramics. Just these beautiful, beautiful handmade flowers that are so delicate. And then this is another piece by Alvin Wayne that I love. Um, and just a nice pop of color in here mixed in with thrift store art and things that I've found. And I've got all of my daughter's stuff displayed down here in the baskets that she can easily access. And basically down here are all the coffee table books, design books. I constantly just pull them out, sit on the floor, um, and just look at it, spread it out on the coffee table, just take my notebook and just start writing ideas and things that I'm thinking of. So the centerpiece of art, this is probably the only thing that changes every, let's say, it's, it's only changed twice. So we'll say every six months, half a year. So this is a piece by Louis Venturulli. He's a local artist in Brooklyn based in Dumbo. And I think it's fun to be able to change out one or two things to change the vibe, to change the season, whatever it is. Um, but you can keep things static. You can change them as much as you want, um, but just have fun and experiment. Welcome to my favorite and also least favorite room in the apartment. This is the bathroom. I saw it and loved it. I've never seen a bathroom this large. It's really romantic and dreamy. However, it's completely unrenovated. I've just sort of cleaned it up, made it livable. So I love coming in here. I love getting ready in the morning. I love opening up the window. I just love that, don't love that it's all in original condition, but you know, at some point that will change. But I think again, home is sort of embracing what you have, enjoying it in the moment. What I've done again is taken advantage of the display shelves. I've got all of my stuff, some vintage art, some found art. I have my grandmother's needle points that my aunt made, so I've got one there, and then I've got another one over the tub, and those are the first things that I hang up in any apartment, and it just kind of tells me, like, I'm home and this is my space. So I hope you enjoyed my giant, unrenovated disco ball bathroom. So welcome to my unrenovated, renovated kitchen. So this was probably the scariest area in the apartment when I bought it. And again, I'm not ready to renovate, but I wanted to clean up. I wanted to be able to cook in here. I wanted to be able to use it and make the space function. So some of the tricks that I use on a lot of my projects for staging, I did a removable peel and stick wallpaper on the walls and then painted uh, the cabinets here. And then for extra storage, I've sort of mixed in my dry goods, things I use, cups for espresso that I use every morning with a lot of display stuff. And I have little things hidden so the apartment 4F, the great little French bakery is down the block. This is their croissant cereal box, but in it I have all like 
freezer storage bags and things. I just thought it was a great little piece. And then other things that we'll often do is we'll paint kitchen cabinets. These are really old metal cabinets. I added in new hardware. I haven't filled in the little gap from the old space yet, so don't look too closely. But basically everything you see here is an inexpensive cosmetic fix uh, to make the space just feel fresh and clean, even down to the vinyl floor. I pulled up the original old vinyl floor, which was really awful, and then just put down a new one. And the white makes a darker, smaller space much brighter. And it's a great way because I went really dark in the kitchen, even painted the ceiling a charcoal. Um, but this is a great way to make a nice little contrast between all the white and sort of brightness of the rest of the apartment. I wanted one space to be more contrasting. Home is, it's kind of everything. Like for me, you know, it's my business, it's my life. I grew up in a way where it was my mom supporting my brother and I, and home was often a place that we were told like, if we didn't work or something happened, like we wouldn't have a roof over our heads. And so it's always been a little bit deeper and an understanding of, you know, more than just shelter and that it could go away. Home to me has just always been about security. As I've worked on this apartment, and this is the first home I've owned, I've rented my entire adult life. I've learned that I can really live in a small space. I can live without of a lot of superfluous stuff. Seeing the things I've collected, the art and accessories is really important to me. I've never really had that or the space to do it. I love making it fun for my daughter and I. Like my favorite thing is when we sit at the coffee table and play board games or do a puzzle. And just that coziness is something that I've really come to love and cherish, especially in the winter by the fireplace. It's great. I was in love with the space as I walked up the stairs to the building. I've never seen a building like this. You know, I sort of fell out of love with living in New York for a very long period of time. And I kept thinking like, maybe it was time to leave. And in the pandemic when everyone else was leaving, I was like, that seems like a really good idea. But then buying this apartment really changed a lot of that. And one of the things that, that happened that I didn't expect is I wake up every morning to the sound of birds chirping. And I think, you know, a lot of times we don't really think about the location and its surroundings and how it can impact us. But I live on this quiet little street. I honestly like feel like Snow White, like when she wakes up and goes over to the window and the birds are chirping and she's talking to them. And it is just the most lovely experience and it does change your relationship with living in a city like this and working at the pace that I do and the amount of hours that I do to have this sense of quiet, to come home and see the sun setting onto the promenade, it's really just special.